Hi, welcome to Studio Viv. I'm Viv, and if you're starting in photography, you've probably heard a lot of terms concerning exposure, and they can be kind of hard to keep track of. So today we're gonna to be talking about the three main elements that determine the exposure of your photo, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, also known as the exposure triangle, and what aspect of your photo each of them controls. Also, I have a quick question for you. What's one photography question you have? It can be anything regarding settings, cameras, or editing. Whatever it is, be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more photo and video content. So, first things first, aperture. Aperture is the opening in your camera lens that allows light to pass through and reach the sensor. Aperture is measured in f-stops, such as f1.4, f2, f2.8, and so on. It's used to control the amount of light that enters your camera. Aperture also affects the depth of field in a photo, which is another way of saying how much of the picture is going to be sharp and in focus. A lower f-stop number, such as f1.4, will result in a larger aperture opening, which allows more light to enter the camera and results in a shallower depth of field. This means that your subject will be in focus and the background will be blurry. This is also what creates bokeh in low light shooting. A lower aperture number is usually used for portraits or for when you're taking a picture of something small and want it to stand out from your background. On the other hand, a higher f-stop number, such as f16, will result in a smaller aperture opening, which allows less light to enter the camera and results in a deeper depth of field, which means that both your subject and its background will be in focus. A higher aperture is usually used for stuff like landscapes, cityscapes, architecture photography, or anything that you really want most of your frame to be in focus. The next corner of the exposure triangle is shutter speed. So shutter speed is pretty much exactly what it says it is. It's how fast the shutter in your camera opens and closes. More specifically, the length of time your camera sensor is exposed to light when you click the shutter. It's measured in seconds or fractions of seconds, such as one over a thousand, one over 500, and one over 250, and so on. Shutter speed, along with the other points of the exposure triangle, play a really important role in the overall exposure, as well as the motion blur and freezing of motion in the image. A slower shutter speed, such as one over 80 or one over 50 of a second, will allow more light to reach your camera sensor, resulting in a brighter image. However, it will also allow more time for any movement in the scene to be captioned, resulting in motion blur. This can be helpful in creating a sense of movement or motion in a photograph, such as in a photo of a running river or a moving car, but it can also create an out of focus picture. So it really depends on what kind of effect you're going for. But on the other hand, a faster shutter speed, such as one over a thousand or one over 2000 of a second, will allow less light to reach the camera sensor, making the picture darker. However, it will also freeze the motion in a scene, which can be useful for capturing sharp, clear images of fast moving objects, such as sports or wildlife, or one of my personal favorites, splash photography, which is really, really fun and also really, really messy. I highly recommend it, go, go try it, it's fun. And finally, for the last point of the exposure triangle, there is ISO. So unlike the aperture and shutter speed, which control physical mechanics of your camera, all the work ISO does is digital. So in photography, ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization, which is a mouthful, but don't worry about memorizing it. I didn't even know what it stood for until I went and looked it up to make this video. What you need to know is it refers to the sensitivity of the camera's image sensor to light. So basically, that's a long way of saying it's adding exposure to your photo digitally. ISO is measured in numbers such as 100, 200, 400, and so on. And the lower the ISO number, the less sensitive the camera sensor is to light and the less noise in the final image there will be. A higher ISO number will make your image brighter, but it also increases the amount of noise in the image. It's very similar to when you increase the brightness too much in an editing software. You tend to see a good amount of noise and pixelation. You should typically use a lower ISO in bright situations such as sunny outdoor shooting and a higher ISO in low light situations. But again, do keep in mind, as you increase the ISO, the image may become more grainy or noisy. I typically try to stay below 800 if I can, but situation calls and sometimes you do have to raise it and there are ways to fix it in editing. 
So to avoid noise or grain, first adjust your aperture and shutter speed and then adjust your ISO for the best possible result. So now that you understand what each corner of the exposure triangle does, you need to be able to tell if your image is properly exposed. Well, lucky for you, most cameras have a handy little chart called a histogram. Every photographer needs to make the histogram their best friend because I cannot tell you how many early photos of mine could have been better before I edited them in post. The chart might be a little confusing to read at first, at least it was for me in the beginning, but what you need to look for is the graph being closer to the middle. This usually means your image is evenly exposed. Do keep in mind though, the histogram leaning more to the left or to the right isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just good to see it as a general guideline. So, now equipped with knowledge of how to properly expose your photos, I encourage you to pick up your camera and start shooting. I hope this video has helped you understand the exposure triangle better and that you will use this knowledge only for good. No, I'm kidding. Use this knowledge to take your photography to the next level. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, here's another one for you to watch. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And as always, go make some awesome content.